Dale, we know that you spend most of your time training golfers at the highest level, you know, guys like Jeff Ogilvie, Matt Goggin, Aaron Badley, uh, but you also train club golfers. So is there any difference at all in the way you approach training Jeff Ogilvie versus, say, an 18 handicapper? Um, well, your, your difference, the difference really comes about by uh, what each individual's goals actually are. Uh, obviously, the guys at the highest level, the goals that keep getting better, um, and you're working on often quite minute things within their game. Uh, and they're very focused on improving all aspects of their game. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're continually working with them on, on all those areas, reassessing where they're at, they've set their goals, re reassess where they're at, mm -hmm. set the program, continually looking at improving, continually looking at improving. The only handicapper would be similar, but often what actually happens is that um, club golfers' ambition with their game can be slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that not all players are actually necessarily interested in improving their score or their right. handicap. Uh, a lot of times is that they may just want to get rid of the slice or hit the ball better mm -hmm. or hit the ball further. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, therefore, how you go about working their game will be based on what their actual goals and ambitions are for their game. Right. Um, and then also you need to be flexible in as much that often the 18 handicap uh, doesn't have anywhere near the same amount of time to work in his game that right. Jeff Ogilvie would be uh, badly. Mm -hmm. would do. So what actually happens is that you look at one, what the person actually wants to achieve and improve their golf game. Right. Two, how much time you've got to allocate it. Mm -hmm. And then you set the program, you both set the program based on those two, those two areas, which is obviously what their goals are, the amount of time they can put into it. Etc. Mm -hmm. Etc. Et so that that primarily will be the difference between the, the two areas of, of golfer. Okay. Now coming back to one of your star players, of course, Jeff Ogilvie has had a great year in the US PGA Tour this season. Um, a lot of times, people watching him would notice that he just looks like the calmest guy. Uh, it looks like he's just playing a casual round with uh, a bunch of his friends, and he's always popping up on the leaderboard in the biggest events. Is that? Confidence, that calmness, something that just comes to him naturally? Is that something you've actually worked on? <laughs> it's a long way. People saw Jeff as a, as a young player, and uh, a young pro wouldn't suggest it comes naturally. It's something, Jeff was actually a bit of a hothead, um, which he's freely admitted himself, so I'm not, I'm not putting him in there at all. Okay. Um, he's, he, look, he's just been aware of it. I mean, mental skills are a very important part of the game, as we yep. all know. The golfs of all level would appreciate, you know, mentally it's a, it's a big big part of the game. And, and, and just been very aware that he's had to improve those areas. Mm -hmm. um, so that that exterior you see um, is probably camouflaging a little bit of what's going on inside. Right. But for him, it's a very conscious effort that you know mentally needs to be better. Um, sometimes calmness, um, being calm, and not necessarily be the right term or the right mental state, mm -hmm. but certainly not being angry and frustrated like he used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and when he's in the right frame of mind, you can actually tell with him because he walks slower, everything he does about him is very calm, right. he does things slower. Um, so as with most players, the, the physical nature of how he goes about things will give an indication of what's actually going on mm -hmm. mentally. So with, with Jeff, you can certainly see the pace in which he does things around the course now right. is a lot different than what it used to be. But that's actually come through not getting as frustrated, not getting as angry. Right. It's an interesting one though, because he's, he's said at different times that he's tried to play calm before mm -hmm. and can't break 80, right? Because you need to be in a competitive frame of mind. Mm -hmm. You need to be competitive. So there is a line there between you know, maintaining a competitive edge mm -hmm. within your emotion, right. but and not allowing that to blow over the top and allow that to get into frustration and anger. Right. Uh, and often it's a challenge for good players to do that if they're naturally competitive and they're not playing so well. Mm -hmm. and it is a challenge for them actually and they bring themselves back down to that correct competitive mindset. Right. Well, Dale, a couple of great insights and I'm sure the Pure Golf training members are really going to enjoy them and uh, use them to improve their golf game. So thanks for giving us your time today. Well. Appreciate it.